Hey guys, this is my first video tutorial. Uh, I did a post a little while ago on Reddit uh, in Outrun with this photo here. Um, and this is obviously the finished uh, version. Uh, but what I'm going to show you is I had a lot of requests from people asking how to get a photo to look like this. So I am going to take you through what I did and it's pretty sort of it's a pretty quick process I mean I just sort of you know went on how it how it looked you know that just in the basic outrun sort of colors like the, the pink the neon sort of pinks and the cyan sort of blues so um, this is what we'll sort of get to but I'll just take it back to what it was <coughs> Yep, so here, um, <coughs> for you guys that you may may or may not know, this is Adobe Photoshop, obviously, this is the latest version. Uh, I'm running Camera Raw here, so this is a Nikon Raw format image. Uh, I'll just take everything back to how it was. <coughs> Okay, so I'll even do that. Okay, the, so this is pretty much um, this is pretty much the raw shot here. I'll just quickly confirm. Yeah, so this is the raw shot. So we're sort of looking to go from, you know, this was just taken at night time in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia, and we sort of get to that. So. Okay, so I'll just start going through what I did. So the first thing I did in Camera Raw here was I changed the temperature um, just to get it a little bit more blue. So I sort of sat around 3,900 and then added some purple tones in and I went around 32. <coughs> now this photo here, uh, like I said, it's in RAW format. You can see it's Nikon RAW here. It was shot on just a um, medium sort of um, crop sensor SLR um, and the ISO is sort of, well it's quite high, it's at 800 because it's, it's night time so um, yeah so I will slightly adjust the exposure probably to just, yeah, just a little bit so the contrast I'm actually going to bring down a bit because with some, well with with cameras, especially at night time, the contrasts are a little bit more dark, so I just sort of took the contrast back a bit, and then the highlights, uh, the highlights in this image uh, are a little bit bright, so I sort of took it back a bit. <coughs> and the shadows, I sort of brought the shadows out a bit, up to about there. And the white balance I adjusted. <coughs> just a little bit to about five <coughs> and then the blacks I took just sort of lighten the blacks here to about 15 okay now the clarity and vibrance and saturation and the clarity I sort of just took it just a touch just to about four sometimes you know the more I wanted to keep this sort of like and natural as natural as possible but more just focusing on bringing out the, the outrun sort of colors so I'll leave it at about four <coughs> okay the vibrance I brought the vibrance up to about 13 so if you go if sort of you can probably take it a bit further if you want to but since I'm going to play with the colors here in camera raw I'll just leave it at 13 for now and I'll turn the saturation just to about eight. Okay, so we're sort of getting there. This is just how I tweaked uh, the image here in this section. Uh, now, if we go across to, I actually sharpen the image up um, because I'm working. I'm only working with a single image here. I just left the sharpening at about seventy-five. 
I mean, sorry, I took it up to about 75. Uh, that's all I changed. I left, like, it, it, it will be a bit noisy if you zoom in. Um, but yeah, I just, I left the noise reduction off. You can, you can change that if you like, but I find that some, you know, if you're trying to keep a shot natural, turning noise reduction up, especially on night shots, can make it look a bit smudged. But, you know, it just depends on what sort of look you're going for, I guess. <coughs> okay, so we'll come across to the hue saturation luminance section and I'll start with the hue of these colors <coughs> now what I did was I started with the reds and you can sort of see the reds on the left of the frame there actually changing because it's quite a vibrant and colorful photo now so bringing this down to about 58 actually changes those reds to that nice neon pink and the oranges I took to... Yeah, there's not much orange on the image, but I just went to negative 12. The yellows... I just went one. I didn't really touch the yellows. I just left them how they are. Greens, I took them up to about 9. The aqua... Uh, yeah, there's not a lot of aqua, but I just... It took about negative 19. Now the blues, this is a pretty big one here, so I went down to negative 40. I really turned up the signs there. And the purple, 11. And the magenta, 6. Okay. And so we move across the saturation. <coughs> Now the reds, okay the reds, I took to four, the orange took them down slightly, the yellow, green and aqua I left just at zero, the blues I turned them up a little, purples I turned up to about twelve, and the magenta's five. Okay, so you can sort of see where we're at now. Still not, still not quite there. <coughs> so we move across. I just I leave the luminance. Um, yeah, I just sort of I left everything how it was. If if it doesn't look right, I'll come back. If I did touch the luminance, but I don't remember touching luminance anyway. So we'll run across to split toning. So just up here, split toning. <laughs> Okay, so I left the highlights to stay at zero, and I turn this up to 67. So you can see that change there, it's sort of really bringing out those pinks. You know, you could go back down this way and play around a bit if you really want to bring out the blues, but I was sort of looking to try and bring out that nice blue and pink hue in the shot, so I'll leave that there and we'll move down here. Now the shadows. So I move them up to 54 in the hue. 224. So it's looking pretty blue now, but if we change the balance, the color balance here, push it towards the highlights so you can see all I mean that looks pretty cool but you can see how it's <coughs> sort of changing here but I left it down about 43 a couple other little things I did here <coughs> was I removed chromatic aberration it's just something I always do um, probably doesn't really matter too much in this shot because we've already you know changed the colors here and enable profile corrections. So I just let the software hasn't really done much. Just lets the software detect the lens and sort of it'll just sort of 
It's not a dramatic change here, but it just sort of removes any distortion. <coughs> okay, so that is pretty much where I got to with that stage. So there was a few other things I did to the image, and I'll sort of try and... It was quite a while ago that I did it, so I'll just try and go f by feel here to get to the final result. I'll just quickly show you guys the final result that I put on Reddit. So you can see here this shot. So you can see I've really changed it, the tones here because it's sort of looking really contrasty there. But this is, I've sort of softened out all the shadowing and used curves to just give it a bit of a, I don't know, a vintage sort of effect, I guess. I didn't worry about any dust or any film looking stuff. I just left it like that. So we'll just go with this. And I'll just take you through a couple of things that I did. If I can remember. Okay, so... Uh, I will just go through... I will add... Sorry, it was a bit quick. i just go down here. I can't actually remember what this thing here is called. Uh, adjustment layer. So we'll go adjustment layer, brightness contrast. <coughs> you can clip it here. I'm on PC. You can clip it to the image if you're working with multiple layers by holding Alt you see alt click you'll see this it'll clip to the image but uh, I'm not going to worry because I'm just working with one layer so I'll just I'm just sort of going on feel here yeah it's not really much that needs to be done there So I've just created a levels layer here, but the main one, here we go, is the curves layer. So I'm sort of going to turn, just bring the shadows down a little bit, and there's that really nice sort of tones in the shadow is, but the highlights aren't really affected yet because we're only working in the the shadow part of the image here. So just leave that there. Now, sort of, I'm going to just sort of sit around the mid-range here. I'm just sort of trying to get it how I had it. You know, I don't have any action sets or previous saves of this file with all the layers, so I can't really see exactly what I did, but I'm just sort of remembering. Maybe a bit more. Yeah, probably don't want to go too much. Depends what sort of look you're going for, but... Wow, I had more... I had more tones on that final image. Oh yeah, I really turned it up. Okay. So you can sort of see what I'm doing. I mean, this is just a curves layer here. I've just created three points here. And I'm just sort of trying to get the shadows... A little bit of depth, so you can sort of... S see through it. It's like a matte sort of... A real nice matte sort of look. That looks pretty good. <coughs> that looks pretty good. And I'll just quickly... Sometimes, depending on how I go, I'll play around the vibrance here, but it's pretty vibrant, this image. And I'm pretty sure that's, that's pretty much how I had it. Um, <coughs> you can 
create a hue layer and just play around if you really want to push that cyan out and get a really like that's I probably should have actually pushed the hue down on the actual on the master here because that looks really really nice but yeah I'll sort of just leave it there that looks good and I'll just turn the lightness up a little and yeah like depending on what sort of look you're going for I mean this is pretty much where I had it when I when I was finished I just stopped editing um, you can play around the color balances here if you want to you can add a really nice uh, cyan tone to the mid-tones here I might add a little bit there yeah the blues just look really good in the highlights Just slightly turn the red up on the highlights there. Wow. I probably should have spent more time on the final one, but this is looking pretty good. I'm just sort of playing around with the... Wow, yeah, see, that's really nice. I might... Yeah, leave it there. At about negative 13. And leave that there in the shadows. Probably don't need to do too much here. Yeah, leave that at zero. Yeah, again, this is all just what you sort of look you might want. But there, a plus one will do. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's, um... So you can see where we came out of Camera Raw here. And it's looking, you know, it's looking pretty good s still, but it's a bit contrasty. I didn't really do much with the brightness contrast. Sort of brought it down a little with the levels there. The curves do a lot of the work. And then the hue, saturation layer, and then a bit of colour balance to finish it off. And there you got... I mean, that's a pretty nice looking outrun style shot. Um, some of you guys will probably critique this and so that I've turned, I need, I need to turn some of the highlights down because they're coming through as, I don't know, bits and specs, but I don't, it really looks, I mean, you know, Outrun's really got that pink and cyan blue sort of tone, so, I mean, that looks pretty good. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching, and sorry I took so long to get this video up, but um, hopefully to help you have, um, you know, create your own sort of Outrun style style photo. So I'll just, I'll go back and I'll quickly show you. So that's pretty much where we were with the original shot. I mean, I've, that's got a little bit of saturation. And then we... So we go from this to this. Thanks for watching, guys.